Welcome back to Innovation. Today, what we are going to do is start a simulation. The first thing we need to do is sign in. So I'm gonna click sign in. And there we go, I am all signed in. The next thing to do is click on create. And I'm gonna create a brand new project. Now we don't want the cat for this, so I'm gonna delete the cat. And we're going to create a sprite that is gonna represent a little life dot. So all I wanna do is put a teeny tiny little dot right there. And that's it. That dot is gonna represent a life simulation. So we're gonna simulate what life is like for this little dot. Before we can start moving our dot around the screen and making it change behaviors and do stuff, what we need to do is give it some boundaries. Now, normally we can determine when the dot touches the edge, but we wanna know when the dot touches a particular edge. When does it touch the top? When does it touch the bottom? When does it touch the left? When does it touch the right? Now we did this before in another program where we created a sprite for the ground. And we had the ground tell us where the bottom was, so that way when the ball hit the ground, it would delete. We're gonna do something similar here, but we're gonna do it for all four sides. So we're gonna create four sprites. The first one, we're gonna go in the paint. We're gonna rename this one and call it top. Then we're gonna draw a line across the center of the screen. And you really wanna to try to line this up with the center as best you can. If you have to move the line, you can do that by clicking on this little arrow here and dragging it down, and now that line is centered. You can see that it's not quite long enough over here, so we're gonna make it a little bit longer. There we go. Do the same thing over here. Perfect. Now the other thing I wanna do is I wanna move it to the top, and we can do that in two ways. I can click on the line here in the stage and drag it up to the top, but I could also just change the Y value to a number that is the top. So the top of the Y value is about 179. So I'm gonna change that to 179. And we can see that it moves up to the top, maybe 180, might be a little bit closer. There we go, that looks pretty good. So now we have this way up here at the top. Now I'm gonna create another sprite and guess what we're gonna do? The bottom. So let me make sure this is named top. Didn't take the name for some reason. Let me go here, sprite three. We're gonna call this one the bottom. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna draw a line. Try to get it through the middle. Well, mine's a little not so straight, but we're gonna to try to fix that a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we're gonna move it to the bottom, which is going to be negative 179 or negative 180. That's good. You can see that's pretty good, close to the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. Next, we're gonna do a left and a right. So let me add in another sprite. We're gonna call this one the left. Draw in my line, but this time instead of going horizontal, I want to draw a line that's vertical. Get my arrow to move it around a little bit. There we go. Now the 
x value is the value we want to change, and it's going to be negative 240. And there we go. It's on the left-hand side. Then we're going to do... Oh, it said it to me negative 239. So maybe we'll make it negative 238 just to be sure. There we go. Now I can see it for sure on the side there. I'm going to rename this left. There we go. I'm going to create a new sprite. Do the same thing. Draw a vertical line. I'm going to try to really get it straight. Oh, that one's kind of off. I'm going to redo that. Do it again. Yeah, close enough. Then the x value is going to be 240. You can see that gets it all the way to the right hand side. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We just have to kind of get edges around the screen. So now we got a top, a bottom, a left, and a right. The next thing we want to do is add in some code to our dot to make it so that way when the dot starts living, it starts moving around the screen. So we're gonna to have to create some variables and we're going to have to get our dot to clone itself as well. So that way it can kind of grow the population. So we're gonna do some a couple of things here, but first thing we're gonna do is get our dot to move. So to do that, we're going to start with a green flag clicked. We're going to change that later, but for right now, we're going to do a green flag clicked. And I want to make sure the dot shows itself. And then I want it to kind of choose a random color. You know, we don't want it to get it to be always the same color. So I'm going to go into my looks menu. And I'm going to go to set color effect two but I wanna pick a random number. And let's do between one and 200. So we can see we can do that. We can see every time I click my green flag, I get a different color that shows up on the screen. Perfect. Now I'm gonna have it go to a random location to start. The motion, the go to x, y value, and we're going to put in two random operators. We're going to put one in here and one in here. Remember, the random operator is right here under operators. And I'm going to go from negative. 249 in the x value, positive 249 in the y value, in the x value. And then the random y value is going to be negative 178 to positive 178. There we go. Now, I want to keep track of how many of these dots there are. So right now there's just one dot. If I don't create a variable to keep track of the dots, because eventually we're gonna have more than one dot. And I'm gonna call it population. We can see now it's up on the screen, it says population. And since we have one dot, we are going to change the population by one. Okay, so now we're gonna have to get our dot to move around the screen, okay? So first we have to check to see if it's touching the top, the bottom, the right, the left. I'm gonna put in some conditionals here. I'm gonna use several of these if then else's. So this is gonna be for the top, 
Now watch how I do this. This is going to be a little tricky. Then I'm going to get another if then else, and I'm going to put it in here. So it's embedded inside the else. That's two. That's going to be for the bottom. Then we're going to get another one and put it inside of this else. That's three. And then finally, all I want to do is put in an if. I don't need another if else. So that's four. One, two, three, four. You should have four of those and they should all be nested inside of each other. Now I'm going to use my sensing blocks. I'm going to test to see if it's touching the top. Test to see if it's touching the bottom. Test to see if it's touching the right, oh, which I have to change the name, rename that. Hopefully it stays this time. There we go. And then see if it's touching the left. If it's touching the top, I actually want to move it to the bottom. So that way it looks like it kind of flows from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to do that by just changing the motion. And I'm going to set the Y value to negative 178, which is at the bottom. So from the, if it's touching the top, we're going to send it to the bottom. If it's touching the bottom, we're going to send it to the top, positive 178. We're going to do the same thing for the left and right, only we're going to be changing the x value. Set the x value to negative 248 if it's touching the right. Set the x value to positive 248 if it's touching the left. OK. Now. The next thing we have to do is keep track of where it has been. So we're going to create two more variables. Previous x. previous y. So we're going to keep track of where it was and we're going to set the previous x and the previous y by going to motion and finding the x and y position. Now this is the tricky block. We're going to save this for next time. That's all for now. See you next time.